Bwana asifiwe. Ah, uh, my name is uh, Pastor Charity Nashibai Kisanga. And I want to thank the Lord. I praise the Lord. I'm blessed. I am saved this morning, this afternoon, yesterday, and tomorrow. I will still be saved. Bwana asifiwe. I want to thank God for this opportunity to serve him and to tell him how wonderful and mighty he is. And um, I think Pastor Sopel forgot to give us uh, uh, an announcement here. They have the Seattle Women Arise Conference Awake. Deborah awake. Awake, sing a song, arise and set your captives free. Uh, it will be on April 10th to 13th at uh, uh, 14550 West Minister Way North, uh, Pahali Wanapo Abudu. And uh, let us go and support and arise as Deborah arose and praise the Lord. And it is very appropriate because my message for us today, our message for us today is worship in truth and in spirit. What is worship? Why do we want to worship God? Why do we want to praise God? Why do we want to raise up our voices to heaven and say thank you to God? We, we see the story of David. David was a man after God's own heart. You know why? He won God's heart because he was a praiser. He was a worshiper. He was a a man who always carried his harp. It didn't matter whether Saul wanted to kill him. It didn't matter whether things were going wrong. In this, the book of Psalms, David, it's all about praise. He says, praise the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is in within me. Praise his holy name. Because he knew that when he praised God, he got to where he we could touch God. And today we want to talk about praise because we want to know how we can touch God's heart. If we are going to be people that are going to be Christ-like and God-like, we have to touch God's heart. We have to touch God's heart by our praises and our worship. Because in those times, when we read the book of John 4, there was this woman, and there's a pastor who said that he, his name is Reverend Andy. He said, I am a woman without a name. This woman has no name. She is not mentioned like the, 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 the women that followed Jesus that we were told, Mary Magdalene and Joanna. She is not mentioned. Her name is not known. But she is a woman who changed the whole village because of her meeting the one that she knew. She did not know, but she knew after that that he is the one to be worshipped in truth and in spirit. She came to realize, to meet face to face with the one that is the truth, the one that is the way and the one that is the light. She came to realize that even though she had no name, that even though she had a history in the village, that there was one who could change things around. And as I was reading this message, I realized that this message has come there with a reason that God will meet you at your point of need if you open your heart to him. God will come to you because you are praising him and you are worshiping him and you are humbling yourself in his presence. He will come to you even though you are a Samaritan woman. He will come to you even though people in your village don't care about you. They will he will come to you even if you are the poor poorest man in your village. He will come to you even if you are the richest man in your village if you only open your heart to him. So we are told about Jesus walking and he had gone through Samaria and that was not the place that most people would want to end up because the Samaritans were not the people that were, were, were so highly regarded and he gets tired like you and me because Jesus was in the flesh and also in the spirit. He got tired. His body got tired and he came to a well. And he needed to drink some water and he rested there. And the Bible tells us as we were read that a woman, a Samaritan woman. It wasn't a Jewish woman. A Samaritan woman. Let me tell you something. That God will come at any time to anyone when we are ready to meet with him. This was a Samaritan woman. And Samaritan women were not even supposed to go near any men. 
They were not supposed to talk, especially Samaritans were not supposed to be talking with Jews. They were not supposed to have any interaction, and especially a, a, a Samaritan woman with a Jewish man. So she comes to the well. But there is something else that is very important here, that she came to the well at noon. From the place where they were in Samaria, it was a very hot place. And so women never used to go to the, to the well during the day. They would go early in the morning when it was cool, and they would go late in the evening when it was cool. So that they would not go during the day when the heat is so much and they would be burnt by the heat. You can imagine when we used to be in Kenya, most of us carried mutungis in the back. And during the day when the sun is up there and you carry that mutungi and you go, it was always up a hill. It was always up a hill that you went with that mutungi. It was never downhill. When you went downhill, it was empty. When you went uphill, it was a mutungi full of water. And I was laughing with my husband the other day. I told him that sometimes you'd be going up that hill and that, that, that kiogoro, that, that thing that used to stop because you have lost the stopper, the real stopper, would come out. Yeah? And the water would go, pata, 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 and you're trying to hold it. And it's so heavy. Oh, Jesus, Lord, have mercy. But that is where not where. I just wanted to tell you that this woman went to the river, went to the well at noon when the sun was very hot. It is because this woman had a history. And maybe this woman did not want to go to the river or to the well when the other people were going. Because she would be the talk of the, 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 that moment. She would be the talk of that particular time that they were at the well. You know she has five husbands. Even the one that she has right now is not hers. You know us women. That would talk. So she wanted maybe to avoid, maybe she was scared, maybe she was afraid, maybe she, was, she felt downtrodden, maybe she felt she was useless, maybe she felt she was hopeless, maybe she felt that the other people in her village did not need her, did not want her, maybe they did not want to associate with this woman who had maybe some of the other women were saying, oh, you know, mm -hmm. we know you. And so she went during the day. But you know what? At that very odd time, at such a time as that is when our Lord Jesus was just passing by. Because when he wants to meet with you, it will be at any odd time, any odd hour. It doesn't matter. It is for him, not for you. When he wants to meet with you, it is for your own good. So it doesn't matter what time of day or night it is. He wants to meet with you and he will do everything that he can to meet with you. So this woman goes to the well. And she, this, <laughs> she looks at this, the, the, she's not even supposed to look by the way. Huh? She's not supposed to look at this Jewish man. So I'm sure Jesus said, oh, can you give me some drink, some water to drink? And the woman is like, oh, uh, uh, how, 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 how can I give you water? You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan. Maybe she was even covering her face. Maybe she didn't even know how to answer. Maybe she was confused. How can this man not know that this is Samaria, where our Samaritan woman is not supposed to talk to any odd man, especially a Jew? What is wrong with this man? But Jesus continues. Because Jesus had a purpose for this woman that day. And he has a purpose for you today and me. He has a purpose and he wants to speak to us today. We might not be at the world, but we are here because Jesus is here. And he wants to speak to you and me today. And so his message was to this woman. And she said to him, how can I give you water? You are a Jew and I am a Samaritan woman. How can you ask me for a drink? Because Jews did not associate with Samaritan. The woman starts to give the Jesus the distance between them. She started telling him, oh, how can you ask me that? There is such a big distance between.
between us. Why should we be talking about this? And you know, Jesus gives her a word of encouragement and says, if you knew the person that is asking you for a drink of water, hallelujah, if you knew the person that is asking you for a drink, you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. My memoir. Jesuare na mai na ti mage di ma. Jesuare na mai na ti mage di ma. Okay. Na ti mage. Yes, Jesus has water, but not the well water. That is what Jesus is saying. And this is where the woman starts seeing things. Jesus is trying to tell her, you are seeing the physical, the physical well. But I have a well that overflows with the water of life. And if you knew, that is what you would ask for. Today, Jesus is telling us that there are things that we desire. There are physical things that we love. There are physical wells that we are drinking from. But Jesus is asking us today that I have the river of life. And you've come and drink from me. You will never thirst again. And this woman is perplexed. And this woman keeps on asking Jesus questions. And he says, this is the well that our father Jacob gave us. Where else would we get other water? Where else would we go to draw water? And she starts to put herself down. She starts telling Jesus all these excuses. Like we do sometimes that we give excuses because we think that we are not that good. Like the word that passed here, who is the carpenter's son? Who is he to have such wisdom? And we start being pulled down by other people. And we start accepting that whatever other people are saying about us, it is true. But I am here to encourage us today that it doesn't matter what people say about you. Jesus has the last word upon your life. Drama can you read the Maraiga Guruyaku? Kana Moya Nueka Kana Duekaga Gai Nuevena Kigoya Kukia Muisho. He has the last word upon your life. And the woman says, everyone, Jesus says, everyone who drinks this water will be thirsty again from the well. But whoever drinks the water I give you will never thirst. Indeed, the water I'll give you will become a spring of water welling up to eternal life. Jesus is explaining to this woman what the eternal water means. And the woman with her naivety, with her innocence, with her not knowing, with her maybe ignorance, with her hopelessness, with her helplessness, with her everything that she had that was not right to everybody else in her village, the woman says, sir, give me this water so that I won't get thirsty and have to keep coming here to draw water. Give me this water. To her, she thought that this water was the same water from the well. And she's saying, give me this water so that I don't have to keep on coming. First of all, I don't want to come during the day when the sun is so hot. Secondly, I don't want to come here and be laughed out by all these women in my village. Thirdly, I have, I, have, I've come, I have come to the end of my rope and I don't want to suffer anymore. If you can help me, Jesus, I will be happy. But Jesus says, go call your husband. Go call your husband. You know, I thought about this. And I was wondering, what does water and go call your husband, what, what is the connection? But this is where is the turn of the events. This is where things start turning around. This is where the revelation of the woman starts begin. Oh, hallelujah. This is where the revelation of the woman begins. Because she says that, Lord, I, oh, I'm sorry, I don't have one. That's what she said. I am sorry, I do not have one. And Jesus said, what you have just said is quite true. You know, Jesus is not judgmental. Jesus did not judge her. Jesus did not start asking her, 
mama wa miaka 45 na una mzuri mama wa 50 na una mzuri eh uh -huh. what are you doing without one kwani wameenda wameisha no jesus our jesus is not judgmental our jesus does not judge you by the value of what people see our jesus does not value you by what people think about you our jesus does not value us by the things that people want for us but you know what our jesus judges us by our hearts he judges us by where we meet him when he calls us he judges us by how much we worship him and praise him and so jesus says believe me woman it goes on the conversation goes on but i want to go to to go uh, quickly jesus says believe me woman a time is coming when you will worship the father neither on this mountain nor in jerusalem you samaritans worship what you do not know we worship what we do know for salvation is from the jews yet a time is coming and has now come when the true worshipers will worship the Father in spirit and in truth. Bwana sifiwe. Sema in spirit and in truth. For they are the kind of worshipers the Father seeks. God is spirit and his worshipers must worship in spirit and in truth. God is seeking true worshipers. You know when the woman told the truth, Jesus revealed himself to her. She said, I do not have a husband. And Jesus said, you have spoken well. What you have said is quite true. And Jesus, because this woman was open to what God was going to say to her, she was open, she had nothing else left but to come to Jesus. Jesus started revealing herself to her. And he's saying, Jesus is telling her that we are not going to worship on the mountain anymore. We are not going to worship in synagogues anymore. We are not going to worship in temples in, anymore. The time has come that the son of man, Jesus, is here. And this is where we want to be at the right time, at the right place, in the right moment. That is where we need to be. He, we do not have to go to the mountain because the mountain is the Old Testament we do not want to go we do not have to use the, the tabernacles we do not have to use the places of worship but you know what he's saying that is okay we can use them we can come to church to worship but what do we do when we come to praise and worship that is the question he is looking for worshipers that will worship in truth and in spirit. And so what is Jesus telling us? To worship in truth and in spirit. What is the purpose of worship? When we worship, we must first humble ourselves in the presence of the Lord. James 4, 6 says, God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Humble yourselves in the sight of the Lord, and he will lift you up. Bana sifiwe. Humble yourselves in the presence of the Lord and he will lift you up. When we come to worship God, we should be humble. We should humble ourselves. Because we are coming in the presence of the Almighty. David alimbia mungu mpaka nguo zake zikaanguka. Remember when Miriam, when they crossed the Red Sea, she took a tambourine and she praised the Lord. Because in her heart, she knew that if it were not for the Lord, they would not have crossed that, that, that sea. What do we do when God does things for us? Do we humble ourselves? Or do we go saying, it is I who did it? I don't know whether you or I have done it. But sometimes we think that we have done it. Nini yenede na mochoro? Unajua kuchora. Bwana asifiwe. Nilichora, nikachora, nikapata hii, nikapata hile. Lakini God is telling us that the purpose of worship is to glorify him. Is to honor him. Is to praise him. Is to exalt him. 
The purpose of worship in truth and in spirit is to please him. If you do not please God in your worship, then you are doing nothing. You are just a symbol that is making noise. No ilebe. Ilebe inapiga tu kelele. If you do not please God with your worship, then you are just making noise. So worship is a reverent and humble action. It is something that we should think about. When we worship God, we must show our loyalty and adoration to our God. We need to show our loyalty to our God. Because when we worship, we are not worshiping so that other people may see us. Bwana sifiwe. We are not worshiping. Ndiyo watu wanakane ni sisi tunajua kuchukua mikono juu kuliko wale wengine. Bwana sifiwe. Sivi baya kuchukua mikono juu. Lakini when you raise up your hands, raise them up to the Lord. Not because you want to be seen, but because you want God to hear your praises and your worship. Pigia Yesu makofi. When you jump for the Lord, jump because you are jumping. He has given you these two good legs and you can jump because you know where he has brought you from. That is why you see Miriam taking the tambourine and dancing all day and night because she knew that if it were not for the Lord, the Egyptians would have killed them. So she knew where God had taken them from. John 4, 24 told us that we must worship him in truth and in spirit. There is no other way. There is no other option. He is the supreme. And when worship is done by, from the heart, then we are truly worshiping God. Worship is not a place. Worship is not this church. Worship is not your house. Worship is not the little wardrobe where you go to pray. Worship is not the actions, but the spiritual being of the worshiper. The spiritual being of the worshiper. How are you worshiping? Are you worshiping to glorify God? Or are you worshiping to see God, to be seen by man? You know what? God determines how we worship him. Because Jeremiah 10, 23 tell us, tells us that, Oh Lord, I know that the way of man is not in, in himself. It is not in man who walks to direct his own steps. We should look for guidance and directions from God when we worship. We should look for direction and we should look for guidance from God when we worship him. The only way to worship is, is to worship God, not idols. You know, these days in our society, we have a lot of things that we are doing. We are worshiping a lot of idols. We are worshiping money. We are worshiping time. Do you know how we worship time? We are looking at time and thinking we are late instead of worshiping God. We are looking at time and thinking that we have to rush to go to work and we don't even have a little time to read a Bible verse or to say a prayer for God waking you up that morning or bringing you back to work from work. Because going to work and coming back is not kawaida. How many people do you see on the freeway? Hallelujah. Yes, how many people do we see on the freeway that have had accidents? That their cars, their, their, their wheels have come off? That their cars are burning and they couldn't come out? Think about the people that were going to work the other day on the helicopter. Were they going to work? Had they not told their sweethearts they are going to work? See you later tonight? We never take the time to ask God for guidance. We never take the time to worship him in truth and in spirit. The third thing about worship 
is to pay deep, sincere respect and show love and fear to the one who created us. Bwana sifiwe. Atikumcha mungu is part of our worship. To praise God, to show our respect, to show our love for him because he's the one who created us. And in the Kikuyu song we say that if he were to remove his masses, we would not stay for one second. One second. So we need to worship God because we want to show our respect. We want to show our deep and sincere love for him. And the fear of God is the beginning of wisdom. Because God holds our destiny into our hands. Like I said, he has the last word upon your life. Upenda usipende. Mungu ndia na ile neno la mwisho katika maisha yako. So our salvation, everything depends on him. And that is why in the book of Philippians 2 and 12, it says work out your salvation with fear and with fear and fear and trembling. Work out your own salvation, your own, your own salvation with fear and trembling. Not your husband's salvation, not your wife's salvation, not your mother's salvation, nor your daddy's salvation, but your own salvation with fear and trembling. That is what God desires from us when we worship him in truth and in spirit. Worship should also help us to reflect on the majesty and graciousness of Jesus Christ. When we sing, we extol the Lord, we exalt the, the Lord. When we are praying, we exalt the Lord. When we are studying his word, we exalt the Lord. When we are meditating on his word, we are exalting the Lord. When we are giving, we are worshiping. We are worshiping. When we are in communion, we are worshiping. But when we do all these things, we have to do them in truth and in spirit. When we say in spirit, it's because when we worship God, it should be vertical. God is the spirit. And so our worship should be going up and down, not, oh, hallelujah, not horizontal. It should be going vertically. All the way to our Lord. When you worship God, just say an amen. When you worship God, it should be vertical, not horizontal. Ikienda hivi ayende pahali, ikienda hivi inaenda kwake. And he is pleased because he inhabits, he inhabits the praises of his people. Mukiabudu mungu, tukiabudu mungu in truth and in spirit, anashuka. He comes and inhabits the place where you are. And you try it, and in, you try it. Go and worship God in truth. Usikia kama atashuka. Atakuja. Na atakuongelesha. Na pahali unaanza, atakufatia your answer. Katika jina la Yesu Christo. So when we worship God, all these things bring us closer to God. Prayer, singing, worship, giving, communion, all these things, they make us think like he thinks. It makes us become more like him. It makes us become more Christ-like and more God-like when we worship him in truth and in spirit. Lastly, James 4, 8 says, draw near to God and he will draw near to you. Draw near to God and he will draw near to you. If I want to greet my sister here and I don't want to cross here, I don't think I can reach there. So she has to come closer to me. Bonus viewing. Yes. She has to come closer to me so that we can yeah, greet each other. So when you close, go close to God, 
he will come close to you. When you go far away from him, he will stay far away. So I, the choice is ours. When we worship God in truth and in spirit, it helps us honor him. Worship helps us honor him and edify him and respect him. And it also gives us strength. We are also edified. And we get strength from him. He helps us to develop a God-like and Christ-like mind. We value what God values. Because when we worship him in truth and in spirit, we see what he sees. We like what he likes. We talk how he talks. We pray how he, oh, hallelujah. And we do what he does. Because we have drawn closer to him, then he draws closer to us and we are able to live as children of the almighty. He renews our mind. He refreshes our spirit. And that is why David says, create in me a new heart. Create in me. Though the kera goro jega, jero jororo. Nigeza hote go kugosha. Because I am so bogged down with things, I am not able to release myself. But when you come close to God, he will give you the strength. He will give you what you need to be able to worship him in truth and in spirit. When we worship, the last one, when we worship God, we develop traits or characters of forgiveness, of tenderness, of justice, of righteousness, of purity, of kindness, of love, of self-control. Because you know what? When you're worshiping God, you don't have time for gossip. You don't have time to hate somebody else. You don't have to, time to keep on judging other people. You are worshiping. You are busy worshiping. You do not have time to go. You do not have that time. When you become a true worshiper in truth and in spirit, when we say in truth, we are talking about following the word of God because Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. And whoever comes through me, oh, hallelujah. So when you know God's word and you follow God's work, that is the truth. When you worship in spirit, is that you connect with the spirit of God. And once you are connected and you know the word, you are able to see when the devil comes. And so when you see the, when the devil comes, you are not there to keep on criticizing people. You are not there to keep on talking about other people. You are worshiping. You have no time. Hallelujah. Because you are worshiping God. God gives you another grace. Na watu wana kuangalia wana uliza niki uli ya kaya tarakaraga. Kwa nini ya kasiriki? Kwa nini ya semi hivi? Kwa nini ya pigi makelele? Kwa nini ya semi nma? Because they are busy worshiping. They do not, God gives you the grace to not see the bad, but to always see the good in other people and in yourself. When you have the grace of God, you are not able to see other people worse than yourself. You always see them better than yourself. When you are Christ-like, when you are a worshiper in truth, you know the word of God, so you are not going to put down your sister or your brother. When you know the truth, the truth shall set you free. The truth shall set you free. And what is the truth? The truth is Jesus Christ. If we do not know Jesus Christ, we do not have the truth in us. The Bible tells us that if we say we are not liars, that if we say we have not sinned, then we are liars. We have no truth in us, and we are calling him a liar. Then we are lying. We have no truth in us. Do you get that? So we know that we are sinners, come short of God's glory. But when we start worshiping God and we draw near to him and he draws near to us, he comes in us, stay in me and I will be in you. 
That is what he's requiring of us. So when we worship God, we set our minds to eternal life. We do not set our minds to the things of this earth. Colossians 3, 2 tells us, set your minds on things above and not on things on the earth. Worship is not for our entertainment. Worship is not for us to just feel good. Yes, we do feel good and it's good to feel good. But at the end of the matter, when you worship, our question for us today when we go home, as we go home I mean, when you worship, what do you come out with? worship God. When you give God, do you feel good? Because that's what you should feel. When you pray, do you feel the spirit of God in you? Do you feel that you have met with him when you worship him in truth and in spirit? That is the purpose of worshiping in truth and in spirit. To be able to meet with the Lord. To be able to speak with the Lord and speak one on one. One on one. Hapa kwa hapa. Munaongea na yeye. Na unaskia roho ndania raha. Tusimame. We worship in truth by following his word. His word is truth, and the truth shall set you free. Let us pray. Lord, we thank you for your word. We pray that, Lord, you may speak to us in a special way about worship. Even as we go home, even we go, as we go to our jobs, that we may be able to worship you in truth and in spirit that we may remember that we are here for a purpose and that Lord you love us so much that you gave us your only son that we may have life and have, have it abundantly Lord we pray for each one of us that even those your salvation that has not come to them that it may come to them and even those that have seen your salvation to continue seeking you because the devil is a liar and he will lie to each and every one of us. We bless your holy name. And we pray that as we walk out of this place, we will continue to worship you in truth and in spirit. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit, we pray and believe. Amen. God bless you.